Hello, everyone tuning in for this broadcast of uh, the Alberta Curling Series Men's Major Tournament coming to you live from Leduc, Alberta. We are just finishing up second practice here for this semi-final matchup. Quite a treat we have here today. We have uh, Ryan Weeb facing off against Reed Crothers. My name is Matthew Hall. I'll be bringing you all the action from this matchup. Both games are streamed on the Curling Zone YouTube page, thanks to Curling Stadium. You can find links on their YouTube site to the other matchup, as well as links on curlingzone.com. <clears throat> Quickly going through the lineups here, throwing the yellow stones, we have Team Reed Carruthers. He's backed up by lead Connor Negevin. Second, Derek Samagalski. And the third is Jason Gunlingson. This Carruthers team, a bit of a mashup between two former teams. Connor and Jason, the lead in third, played together for a couple seasons. And Derek, a longtime teammate of Reed Carruthers, when they played with Mike McEwen for the last two quadrennials, they decided to go their separate ways. But Derek and Reed stayed together and brought on uh, very experienced players in Jason and Connor. Looking at the Ryan Weeb team, we have lead Adam Flat, second Sean Flat, and third Ty Delello. This Weeb team may be a bit of a surprise. Definitely a bit of an unknown team when looking at the four players that are left, but I've been quite impressed by their play. I've been able to watch a number of their games on Curling Stadium throughout the week, and they've beaten some very good teams. Uh, they have wins against uh, Corey Dropkin. Jacques Goche, their win in the quarterfinal came against a very strong Swiss team in Marco Hosley. And so they're on a bit of a roll. And looking at how Carruthers came into this matchup, they uh, had a bit less of a successful triple knockout bracket. They did have two losses against Jacques Goche and Aaron Sluchinski, but were able to rattle off a number of wins to get themselves through the seaside qualifiers and finished off with a very strong win against Riku Yanagasawa out of Japan in the quarterfinals. So they come into this semifinal. This will be Carruthers' ninth game played this weekend. It will be Team Weeb's seventh. And because of uh, Ryan coming out through the B-side and Carruthers coming out through the C-side, Ryan Weeb did have the choice of Hammer, they chose to take the final stone here in the first stand, so advantage Reeve here to start. So we see here the lead for Reed Carruthers, Connor Negevin. They're not going to waste any time attempting to throw up a center guard here. Our other semifinal matchup is between a vi the number one Swiss team. Yannick Schwaller at the moment, uh, facing off against Ontario's John Epping. That'll also be a really good matchup, I think. John faltering a little bit in his first couple events, failing to qualify, but on a 4-0 roll here, and Yannick Schwaller came through the B-side. And after that tight center guard is made, Ryan Weeb decides to draw to the wing as that comes to rest. About back corner of the eight foot. Not much of a surprise here. I think this Reed Crothers team, obviously, much more experienced than this young Weeb squad out of Manitoba. And so, not surprised that Ryan wants to play to the open side of the rings, maybe keep things a little bit cleaner for a little bit longer in this game. Connor Negevin just getting enough of that stone to remove it from play. I took a quick look at the betting lines on this matchup, close to see what the professional opinion was on this match. And most lines had Reed Carruthers about a 65% favorite um, coming into this game. Maybe a bit 
a bit surprising at first glance looking at them. You'd probably expect them to be bigger favorites in coming into this game against Ryan Weeb, but Ryan off to a much better start coming through the B side. And because of that, it was known that they would have the hammer to start this matchup. So that's definitely pushing things more towards the Weeb side. This one very heavy though, slipping through the rings. And so now the free opportunity for Reed Carruthers to draw around this guard and force the force the issue against this against Ryan Weave, and he'll have to decide whether he wants to continue playing or try to keep things open. The second for Reed Carruthers is Derek Samogolski, longtime teammate of Reed's for a number of years, going back to even their junior days. And for most people outside of Manitoba may not be very familiar with the name Ryan Wee, but I think for most people in Manitoba would know of him, played at a number of men's provincials in Manitoba and done quite well for themselves over the year. They are quite a bit younger, not that much older than, uh, the, not that far out of the junior rankings. Going to take on this straight run back here and try and make the double. Another indication that they want to keep things a little bit simpler here early in this game. Even if you make this, though, you're going to probably leave a guard somewhere, although this one tracking out a little bit wide removes the guard and rolls out of the way. And I think we'll see Reed just call to replace the center guard. It looks like he will. Covers mo enough of that stone in the rings that Ryan feels like he needs to play it. Of course, if he wanted to be a bit more aggressive, could just make a play on the one back four. We have seen quite a bit of curl this week, although that being said, some of the games later yesterday, we saw a lot of teams getting caught in some straighter spots. So it's possible the Rocks just quite aren't quite as sharp as they maybe would have been at the start of the weekend. This run back's looking very close, makes contact with one. In contact with the second one but isn't able to remove it so leaves the red guard there not a complete miss though for the Ryan Weeb team if Reed ever does decide to play around that red guard they would be running back their own color for the moment though I think that would come maybe on Jason's second or Reed's first rock for the moment they look to be content with just continuing to guard this shot rock Jason Gunlickson, of course, plenty of experience on his side, the 2020 Manitoba men's champions. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they were uh, selected to represent Manitoba at the 2021 Briar as well. Maybe not quite getting the success they would have liked at those Briars, finishing in 2020 with a 5-6 and six record and then a 6-6 six and six record uh, in 2021. <laughs> To make some waves here with this new team. It's Manitoba is going to be quite the battle, I think, this year. We, of course, have this team here. Mike McEwen has vacated a spot as he moves to Ontario, but that spot gets filled right away by Matt Dunstone's new team, who will be very solid. As Jason makes this guard pretty good. It'll be interesting to see how long Ryan decides to play these runbacks. I think we'll see at least one more, or possibly the double peel here. Looks like he is looking at the double peel. Problem with this is, of course, because the red is slightly higher, you have to hit this one first. Now, this isn't a difficult double peel, but you're you're always hitting the rock that 
isn't really as much of an issue to you first if you ever hit it a little thick uh you might miss now this looks to be a little wide gets one and pretty good actually just misses that red so i believe he hit the yellow first but close enough that he's able to wiggle through and move that red stone out of the way it is in the path of that outturn draw to the button so it's something that ryan might have to contend with but for the moment gets it far enough out of the way that he's probably not worried about it if he ever has to draw down to that yellow stone with the intern uh, i'm sure that's something he's confident in This is, of course, a matchup we might see at the Manitoba Men's Provincials with both of these teams being out of Manitoba. And, of course, it will be expected that we will be qualified for that Provincials. And Ryan himself has competed on a number of Men's Provincials, so I'd expect to see this matchup at least a couple more times this season. <clears throat> I'm going to take one more crack at this. I'm a bit surprised... With that Yellowstone behind the T-line, at any point could have decided to play some kind of a freeze down onto it, but doesn't want to get into too much trouble early in this game, I think. Wants to ensure he has a fairly straightforward shot to score here to start. Reed now, of course, going to try to basically guarantee his force here by drawing around this red guard, and if he makes it very good... Um, You'll likely see Ryan attempt some kind of run back or freeze, depending on where Reed ends up. Doesn't really do him much to hit the shot stone at the back of the button. If you're going to get forced, you might as well try hard for your two, or possibly a blank by removing a number of rocks. We watch Reed going through his pre-shot routine, having a couple words with his teammates about exactly what the path will be here. This isn't quite what they would have been throwing in practice. Most of their shots in practice would be draws to the button. This one crossing over is likely to hit a little bit of fresh pebble. <clears throat> so we watch... The sheet rock go down from behind. We have Connor Negevin on the left, Derek Samogalski on the right. Line is looking pretty good. Definitely will need to finish a little bit, but the sweepers seem to like the weight. Now they put Connor on it to try and get as much buried behind this red guard as possible. That rock ends up just full top of the eight foot, mostly buried. Maybe not far enough to make Ryan not throw out this shot stone where that rock ended up. You can make a hit and roll behind this guard off of that shot rock. It would be very precise, but if you roll behind the guard, you should be still be high enough in the rings to sit shot stone. First stone of this first end now coming by Ryan Weeb. Tempting the intern hit and roll. Flat Brothers on the broom. Definitely need to make this curl early though. Maybe getting out a little bit wide. Would like to at least stick around for shot and make Reed play it. And they will just get that one turn too far. You may see Reed play this rock regardless. I, there's not really a good place to draw. You could try and sink around that yellow stone again, but you'd be risking the opportunity of leaving maybe a run back double for a multiple points. So I didn't couldn't tell exactly what the call is with this 
room. It probably could be either. Likely just hitting this redstone, and there's the indication by Jason Gunlickson. They are going to attempt to remove this rock, stick right there, and force Ryan Weeb to draw the eight foot for a single point. They seem to like the line, just trying to get a little bit of extra finish out of this at the end. It will come up to the nose, make contact, remove that red stone. And it's Reed Crothers sitting two here with the final rock coming in this first end. Ryan Weeb, well, with a bit of pressure, we forced to get full eight foot plus a little bit more to ensure he scores here with the hammer to start. Sweepers are staying off this one, watching it as it comes into the rings. Definitely has a little bit of extra gas behind it. Will it dig in in time? And no, that'll slip right through. Big miss there by Ryan Weave. It'll be a steal of two to start this game for Reed Carruthers. He will take a two-point lead, two to nothing. We will take a quick commercial break, and we'll come back to you at the start of the second end. And we are back. Welcome back to the Duke, Alberta. 
here for the Alberta Curling Series Men's Major Tournament. My name is Matthew Hall, bringing you all the action from this semifinal matchup. Reed Carruthers starting off very strong with a steal of two there. Uh, an uncharacteristic miss from this young team. I've seen a number of their games, and that's not a shot that you'd expect Ryan Weeb to make with the way they've been playing this weekend. Maybe just a little bit of nerves if you're playing in this semifinal matchup against a very strong team, but a little extra gas behind that draw. It sails right through, and it ends up being a steal of two for Reed Crothers, and that's a big swing um, in terms of the win probability. For Reed, I'm able to starting off, well, starting off without the hammer, um, still a very strong team and they were favorites in this game, but getting that steal of two, you can think about it as if they started hammer and scored their two, they'd be in a very good position right now. See a pretty good hit and roll there by the Weeb team. Maybe would have liked to go a little bit farther to get pretty close to the center, but for the time being, it forces Reed to play it, and that keeps play away from that center guard. And if you ever, even if Reed does roll behind the center here, he'll likely be behind the T line. You may get the opportunity to freeze something on nicely there, or even play around that corner guard later. not getting the role that he would have liked and now this is what i was sort of alluding to now ryan has the opportunity to possibly play this yellowstone flop behind the corner and get something going he really <clears throat> would like to get he's get his points back sooner rather than later here in this game you'd like to get that two back and keep this game under control if you only get one being down one without it doesn't really feel like a big difference looking at the scoreboard but it is huge especially at this level it's not a position you ever want to find yourself in that's where you sort of don't have control of the game now this one looks pretty good does remove the stone does a tiny little bit of a flop but not not much this should be mostly accessible here for the Carruthers team once again <clears throat> Derek, Derek Semigalski trying to match Sean Flat here by playing this takeout around the corner guard. Connor's on it early, though, going the whole way. Might have gotten this a little bit tight. Will it get by? It will. Removes the red stone, rolls towards the center line. That's an excellent shot there by Derek, making things a little bit difficult for the Weeb team attempting to play this hit and roll. Chris, this is a position where you could theoretically ignore that Yellowstone if you wanted to. I don't think we would see Ryan's team do it, but since it is still a little bit early in the game. You could just draw around that corner guard and try and set something up, but I think you'd only take on that risk if it was a little bit later in the game and you sort of had to press the issue a bit. For right now, they're still going to attempt this hit and roll. <clears throat> Sean Flat attempting to learn from his last one and make this one even better. Ty Delello on it the whole way, maybe got a little bit tight. Makes contact and rolls. An excellent shot there by Ryan Weeb, look, or by Sean Flat, excuse me. Looks like he was able to roll right underneath that guard. Not sure how much is accessible for the Carruthers team. 
He's taking a look at it, so it might be slightly visible, but it might be easier to play the run back. Hmm. Jason Gunlickson makes contact with the first stone. Doesn't remove the second red rock from play. One good thing is he does roll toward onto the center line, jams it on the other stone, moves the yellow rock to a corner guard. We'll likely see Ryan Weave attempt to utilize that new corner guard now for them. If he makes a good draw around here, Reed will be forced to decide to just hit the open one. And uh, unless he can make a really good roll, would likely concede the two points in that case or attempt the run back, which is probably the better option if he wants to go for the force, but of course would take on quite a bit more risk as well. See Ty DeLello's first shot here in the second end, attempting this out turn come around on the corner guard. Sweepers seem to like the weight early. They're staying close. And this seems to have plenty of line. Now they get Sean Flat on it to try and finish this stone behind the guard. And we saw this quite a bit last night. The Rocks do not seem to be getting quite as much finish as we would have seen earlier in the weekend. Of course, the Weeb team would know that. They played last night as well. But just a number of teams getting caught, not really ending up all that close with those come-arounds and those freezes. This one looks like it stayed mostly accessible, if not op wide open for the Reed Crothers team. So they're going to attempt to just make this... Nice hit and roll behind the center guard. If they can put it even mostly buried around the guard, it'll make things tougher for Ryan Weeb and his squad. Ideally, you'd like to overroll this rather than underroll it. If you roll it to the other side of the guard, you're likely forcing Ryan's team to start grouping their stones where you might be able to make a double. Derek Samagalski on this the whole way, though. Gets it by the guard. Makes contact, removes the redstone, sticks around pretty close to where it was. So, so I mean, now Ryan can still attempt to hit this stone. And even if he can't get around that corner guard, he's keeping his red rock separated. And it would still take a few more nose hits for uh, them to leave a double for the Carruthers team. So as long as they keep this red rock on the other, on this side of the sheet, could definitely would definitely leave the opportunity for Reed to make a nice hit roll at some point, but at least you're keeping the red rock separated, and that's how you're going to generate a deuce. Reed taking a long look at that double. It looks pretty flat. I think if it was Jason throwing it, he might be able to take it on. But not sure Reed has quite as much of an upweight ability there. He can throw it quite hard, but this that double would be really flat. But even if you can roll to the other side of the rings, kind of like Jason's saying here, if you roll to the other side of the eight foot, then in all likelihood, Ryan would have to leave you some kind of a double. So I think the call here is to roll either pretty much anywhere from right behind the guard to all the way over to the other side of the eight foot. Definitely need to stick around for shot.
So he is able to roll to the other side of the rings, and now Ryan has to be a little bit more careful. That yellow rock rolls another stone or so, then it would be very difficult for Ryan to not leave a double as is. At the moment, if he rolls at least two feet over to the left-hand side, it's going to be a very difficult attempt at a double takeout for Reed. So first stone here for Ryan Weeb in the second end of play here. Looking to make a hit and roll towards the center line and not leave an easy double for Reed Crothers to get out of this end. Getting Sean flat on it to try and get some curl. Unfortunately, is able is only able to just hit it on the nose. And this is a pretty... Pretty easy double for Reed Crothers, I would think. Just about a half rock on the high side should remove both red stones, and then we'll likely see Ryan just play the hit for the blank. So had the opportunity here, the Weeb team, to come back after giving up that steal of two in the first end, but unfortunately there was doing pretty well until that shot and just wasn't able to get enough curl to separate these stones quite a bit. This is a shot that you'd expect Reed to make quite often. It's not usual that they'll miss these really close half rock doubles. It's pretty natural. The final stone here, the attempt by Reed Carruthers. Getting Derek on it early. Looks like it should be pretty close and they will make contact with both red stones, remove them from play. And no hesitation by Ryan Weeb puts the broom down for the blank attempt. He'll attempt to remove this stone and roll out and move on to the third end of play, holding on to the hammer. Final stone here in the second end. Looking for the blank attempt is Ryan Weeb. Have Adam flat on it, trying to hold it straight. He'll make contact, roll out of the rings. It will be a blank. Reed Crothers holds on to his two-point lead. Score after two ends of play is two to nothing. We'll take a quick commercial break, and I'll be back with you in a few moments for the start of the third.
and welcome back as we begin the third end of play here in the semifinal matchup in Leduc, Alberta, the Alberta Curling Series Men's Major Tournament. My, my name is Matthew Hall, bringing you all the action from play here. Of course, we saw Reed Crothers getting that steal of two to start the game, and Ryan Weeb had the opportunity to get his to that M, but unfortunately, we're not able to avoid grouping up their stones. Reed Crothers makes the double, and we move on to the third end of play here. Both of these teams, it is their first event of the season. And we did see a lot of upsets throughout the triple knockout portion of the event. Of course, most teams switching things up with the start of a new Olympic quadrennial. So plenty of them just needing to shake off the rust a little bit, get used to each other's throws, how they like to play the game. But seem, teams seem to be figuring it out as we've moved into the playoffs. Adam Flatt attempting a hit and roll to the wings on this rock. He will make contact. Will he stick around? No, he will roll out. So free opportunity there now for Reed Crothers to make this second rock even better. Sinking it around this guard. Taking a quick look over at the second end of play in the other semifinal, it is John Epping who took two in the second end. So he leads 2 nothing over Yannick Schwaller in the third end of play. Both of those teams also looking to book their ticket to the final here. Derek Samogolski making a great draw around this guard and... I'm still a little bit surprised that Ryan is taking on this run back. But that stone by Reed slipping just behind the T line. A lot of the times from a few more experienced teams, you might see them just take on the freeze, get it in a good spot, and you can try and score your two that way. Even if you make this double, Reed would just draw around again, most likely, albeit you would be running back your own stone then. He doesn't make the double. He rolls too far away, and that's just a bit of an inexperienced miss there, I would think. You have to at least be close enough that if you roll at least to a corner guard, it gives you something that you can use. But by rolling out, it's essentially just a wasted shot. Now Reed can just continue to guard this stone, and we'll see if Ryan continues the run back or if he's forced into something a bit more aggressive. Talked about giving up that two in the first step was really big. Uh for Reed Crothers against Ryan Weeb. You can't wait too long to get yourself back into this game. I know there's still six ends of play here, including this one, but an eight-end game can go by really quickly, and if you're not careful, uh, you'll find yourself in a position that you don't want to be in. Second four, this Ryan Weeb team is Sean Flatt attempting the double once again after Reed's Rock slides maybe just a bit too far. Ty DeLello on it now. He'll just straight jam it back. So it's a little bit off this Ryan Weeb team today. That one ends up jamming that yellow stone. And I think the worst part about it is left it dead buried and it's now on the T-line or slightly to the high side of the T-line. 
Now Reed can just sort of continue to guard this, and it's much more difficult to deal with. Of course, if Reed ever just kept continuing throwing guards before, eventually you'd be able to throw a freeze down onto it. This stone is still workable. You could come down, tap it a little bit, sit shot, but it's much more. that would be a much more difficult attempt now. So Jason Gunlingson being asked to throw about a halfway or high guard on this red stone. And we peels off the guard. Likely, there's not much thinking here if you're Reed Carruthers. We'll just continue to throw this guard, I think, for as long as he can. I don't see a reason that he would need to risk playing another stone around, possibly on the next one he might, or certainly if this is the situation on Reed's last, he would do that to try and sit too. It'll be interesting to see here if Ryan tries to attempt to make any play on that shot stone. It, it would be very difficult, but in all likelihood, I think we'll try to see them play the double peel one more time. There is a draw to the button available for their point, albeit very tough. Would need to grab basically the pinhole. Second shot attempt by Ty Delello does make contact with that second guard, moves it from play, but leaves his shooter as another center guard. It'll be interesting to see here if you read. Could just straight guard the shot stone. I think he's trying to figure out if he can get a bit more, and I think there is. If he ever just comes into the top of the eight foot, you'd like to maybe leave it a piece open on the left-hand side as we look at the overhead, sort of what do what we call a Christmas tree formation where you can't see all of any of the rocks, just a little bit of each behind the guard. I think best spot here is full top eight foot. If you can sort of just bite the center line, then Ryan wouldn't have full access to any of the stones. Of course, if you end up a little bit light as a tight guard, as Reed is saying, that would be okay. I think the key here is to make sure that you don't go full buried behind the red guard. A lot of people, I think, wouldn't think too much about that and would try to ensure that they end up buried. But if you do that, you're giving Ryan access to the shot stone. And if he ever makes a nice hit and roll underneath, then he's looking at getting his two. So even if this ends up wide open, uh, short of the rings, then Ryan doesn't really have a play on shot rock. Sweepers 
seem to be staying very close. They don't mind the weight, I don't think, but this definitely needs to get a little bit of curl for them. Now they've switched to try and just make sure that they freeze this yellow stone, and they do. I think if they were going to freeze it, they would have liked to get up to the nose. The angle that they left here, does that leave Ryan Weed the opportunity to hit and roll behind uh, the center guard and make the double? I think they just left enough. It is very close, and to make the roll, you'd want to bring the weight down, but I think you may not be worried all that much about making the double, but I think it is pretty big. If you make the double and you don't make the roll, and if Reed doesn't roll buried himself, then you probably have a good chance at the blank. If you don't make the double now, the blank sort of is taken out of the equation. this broom I think they are certainly attempting to roll behind the center guard doesn't look like a lot of weight so I think he's possibly conceding the chance at the double to make sure that he is giving himself the best opportunity to make this roll unfortunately just doesn't get enough curl I was a bit surprised halfway down it looked like that rock was tracking out a bit more than they wanted they certainly could have swept that to try and hit that stone in the rings a little bit more on the high side and keep your red rock on top of it fortunately they let it curl up to the nose that pushes the yellow stone out of the way and now the opportunity here for reed if you can make a nose hit no out no chance for the blanket and you're likely getting your force out of this end Attempt here by Reed's second stone to remove this red rock from play. Looks like it's tracking a little bit out. Wanted to get Derek to get a little bit of curl there. Where he rolled to, I think there is the opportunity now for a blank. You'd likely have to hit it on the center line side and remove the yellows over the top. I think if you throw it hard enough, you can definitely get your shooter rolling all the way across the rings and out for the blank. Definitely going to attempt it. We talked, I already talked earlier about how how big of a difference it is being down one without, not a situation you want to be in. So if you have the opportunity for a blank here, I think it's worth trying. Final rock here in the third end from Ryan Weeb. Attempting a very difficult double and roll out for the blank. Maybe getting a little bit tight. They have a sweeper on it early. Hits it close to the nose. Does well enough to get his single point. But mission accomplished if you read Carruthers. Forces Ryan Weeb to a single point here in the third end. Reed will take a 2-1 to one lead with the hammer. We'll take a quick commercial break. 
I'll see you back in a couple minutes for the start of the fourth. And welcome back to Leduc, Alberta for the semi-final matchup between Reed Carruthers and Ryan Weeb. Reed Carruthers with a 2-1 lead coming into the fourth end. My name is Matthew Hall, bringing you all the action from the semi-final matchups today. Over at the other semi-final, we have Yannick Schwaller playing off against Reed, sorry, excuse me, John Epping. Um, Epping currently holds a 2-0 lead in the fourth end after... A blank in the first and third, and Epping scoring his deuce. Yannick Schwaller looks like he's setting something up that end, so he might be able to get his two. You can watch that other game with Curling Stadium's coverage on the Curling Zone YouTube channel, and you can get links from the Curling Zone YouTube page as well. And now, backs against the wall a little bit for uh, Ryan Weeb getting forced, being down one without. Now all the control of this game is on Reed Carruthers' side. Didn't see exactly what happened to the first stone by Ryan Weeb, but it is out of play. And now the second guard slipping into the ring. So really a big missed opportunity if you're them to force the issue a little bit, get some center guards up. Talked about the odds in the first end to open this match. Reed was about a 67% favorite against Ryan Weeb starting without the hammer. But of course, with that, with really a couple of big missed opportunities by Ryan Weeb and now slipping into the rings. It's like most lines are favoring Reed Carruthers by close to 90% here coming into the fourth end. Again, rolling out there by Reed Carruthers. So we'll likely see a fairly wide open end here uh, between these two teams. Ryan Weeb deciding just to play the hit, although this one curling quite a bit, and it is a flashed rock. Oh, just not having their A game here in this end. And a free opportunity now for Reed to split the rings once again.
maybe just not quite over the shock of those previous couple ends. Ryan Weave has certainly had opportunities, just needed to hit eight foot in the first end to score a single point, sail the draw through the rings. Second end had the opportunity to separate the his stones with a good hit and roll. He ends up nosing it and leaving an easy double for Reed Carruthers. Third end, the opportunity for Blank. He ends up nosing it and getting forced. And now with both of those guards slipping into the rings and a flashed rock, it's all Reed Carruthers here. Leaves this one a little bit higher. So the opportunity here is, is here for the double for Ryan Weeb. Usually with these long ones, you don't necessarily want to take on the double immediately, especially with so many rocks still left to play in this end. Make sure you get enough of this rock that you're not going to roll out underneath that other yellow stone. And if you end up just rolling over towards it, then you're grouping up some rocks and you'll probably have an easier chance at a double later. If you try too hard for the double here, you miss it. Reed's just going to make this stone even better. Makes contact with the one, rolls towards the other side of the sheet, rolls into the other yellow stone, and as I said, doesn't remove it, but now these rocks are very close together. Reed would need to attempt a fairly tricky long roll across the rings to get some good separation between these stones and not leave a double back. I'm sure Derek Samogalski is up to the task. Second stone coming from him this end, looking for the outturn hit and roll across the rings. The longer you roll this, the better it would seem. As long as you don't roll out. Getting Jason Gunlicks in on the sweep to try and get a little bit of extra curl and a far roll. Makes contact with the one, but pretty close to the nose. It's a fairly easy double here for Ryan Weeb. You would likely lose your shooter, but with no guards up, uh, probably not too worried about that. Ryan Weeb likely just imagining that this end is a wash. If he can make this double, he'll play for the blank and try again next end. And no doubt about it, Ty DeLello makes the double, rolls across the rings and out. So nothing in play here in the fourth end. We're likely moving towards a blank. And Reed, of course, with the one-point lead on the hammer, is more than happy to take an end away from Ryan Weeb. So he'll just call to come into the rings for Jason. And I do have access to, there is a live chat room on this game, on YouTube. If anyone has any questions that they like me to talk about or like me to answer, they are welcome to put uh, them in there as we move towards a fairly open end here. Looking forward at the schedule for Reed Carruthers. They'll move on from this event to the ATP Okotoks Classic happening next weekend in Okotoks, Alberta. And then after that, they will play at the Curling Canada Invitational in Fredericton, New Brunswick the week after that before taking a couple weekends off. And they do have the Grand Slams listed in their schedule. And I would imagine they'll be, especially with a good performance this weekend, be well above that threshold to get the invitation to the Slam. So we'll likely see them at most of those events.
we continue to see a bit of an open end here. All right, we're looking to get make this draw to the button, and these are sort of big opportunities. They uh, you sometimes tend to lose a little bit of focus in these ends. Of course, there's nothing necessarily all that interesting happening. It's just wide open hits, and we're moving towards a blank. But this is a really good opportunity for Ryan Weeb to get his draw weight underneath him. Of course, we saw him throw that one through in the first end. And as I think about it, I don't know if he's thrown a draw since then. So an opportunity here, make a good one, know exactly what that feel is. So if you ever have to make one later, you know what that draw weight feels like underfoot. And he makes a good one there into the top of the eight foot. Definitely one the sweepers could have gotten to the button, but they're not necessarily all that worried about it. Curlers removes the stone, hits it on the nose, doesn't get too much of a roll. Ryan Weeb will now look to move this rock, stick around. If there's anywhere that's a little bit tricky that they haven't played yet, uh, that might make the blank. Bit of a tougher option. He will likely attempt to roll there, but especially here in the fourth end, both of these teams have this ice under control. Of course, not only today we will crown a champion for this event. Not only that, but when you look later on in the schedule, there's always that Champions Cup slam at the end of the year. And no guarantee that this event will earn you a place in that. But with the strength of field here early this year, it's certainly a possibility. Could be one extra thing on the line, as well as the points and the cash reward. So we see the attempt, the removal of the stone by Ryan Weeb sticks around top left side of the eight foot. Now it's all up to Reed Crothers to make sure that everything you've worked for this end comes to fruition. Just remove this red stone, roll out, take your blank. And that's one less end for Ryan Weeb to work with to come back into this game. Yeah, Megan, I see in the chat, uh, Tyler Tardy can chug a bottle of water in under three seconds. I've seen it myself. I'm not really sure how that came about or how that uh, was something that he just woke up and decided to learn how to do one day, but it is certainly something he can do. Final rock here in the fourth end from Reed Crothers looking to make this blank attempt. Removes the redstone, rolls out of the rings, put put a blank up on the board. We'll keep the score two to one for Reed Carruthers, taking a quick commercial break before we come back for the fifth end. Reed Carruthers will hold the hammer.
And welcome back as we pick up action here in the fifth end of the semifinal from Leduc, Alberta, the Alberta Curling Series Major Men's Tournament brought to you by Curling Stadium. My name is Matthew Hall. As we just saw the action finishing from the uh, fourth end of the other semifinal, Yannick Schwaller, or should I say Benoit Schwartz, made the draw to the button. Uh, resulting in a single point for them. So John Epping now with a two to one lead with the hammer going into fifth end. So two very similar situations here. Both teams up a single point, two to one. Team with the lead has the hammer. Definitely going to have to force the issue now if you're Ryan Weeb moving into the back half of this game. You can't really afford too many of those free blank ends for Reed Carruthers. And you see they do get the center guard up here to start. Reed Carruthers wasting no time. Asking for a corner guard to go up on the other side, it looks like. Took a fair bit of ice for this. I'm not really necessarily sure if this was the original call, but they get it into the rings on the other side. I think that's more or less what they were looking for. Now Ryan will call up another center guard. This is kind of what you have to do. You're going to have to start taking on some risk if you're Ryan Weeb. Now in general, when you think about this situation being up one without between some of the top men's teams in the world, it's about a 90% advantage towards um, the team that has the hammer up one with, with only four ends to play. And of course, Ryan's team a little bit less experienced than Reed. So you'd likely imagine that slipping even a bit more towards Reed's favor. Reed now asking Connor to draw around these two staggered red guards. Those guards not quite where Ryan we would have liked them. They're very close together. It should be a very simple double peel for Reed's team at some point. So he's just going to ignore them for the moment because you can't peel with the five rock guard, five rock guard rule. I would like this to get to the top of the forefoot, although this one tracking out a little bit wide may be heavy. We'll make just contact with the Yellowstone, push it back into the forefoot. Not the worst outcome there. Of course, quite a bit off with the weight was Connor Negevin on that one. But pushes it to a stone that Ryan Weep can't easily access to utilize that Yellowstone behind the T-line. Of course, if you think, if you're Ryan, anything behind the T-line is pretty much helping you. There are jam possibilities and stuff you might be able to freeze to later. But for the moment, with these red guards up the way there is, can't really access them, so going to try and get a rock in a very good spot here. You know that Reed's going to walk up and make likely make the double peel on his next one, so you need to make sure that this stone gets to a good spot. Because you'll likely have to just continue to guard it for a little while after this. Perhaps the call was the high guard, but they just watch it slip a little bit deep. That's one that you probably want to make the plan B call really early. Once you know that it's going to be pretty close to those other guards, try and bring it around. As is with how close these rocks are, the there's certainly an easy double peel. Possibly even a triple if you can hit it in the right spot. Hit that top redstone over across the face of that middle stone. You can likely get all the reds moving, at least move them off the center line.
Reed is able to get all the red rocks off the center line. So now you're in a little bit of trouble for Ryan Reed. Going to try and scramble here and see what he can get done. I think you'll likely see him just continue to throw this center guard. Eventually, his only option may be to freeze that rock at the back of the eight foot. But that would... He He's going to make the double here. This is actually maybe a bit surprising. I know what they're thinking to try and get the blank and move on with the rest of the game, but you don't have a whole lot of time left. I mean, there's only four ends left. You waste one here. You give Reed the hammer and the even ends, and then you're basically fighting down a point with two hammers to one for the other team. It doesn't really make a whole... A lot of sense i don't think i was i thought they might have just attempted to toss up the guard for a while before freezing that back eight stone and attempting to force read that way blank here is really not good for the weeb team In general, a blank here is about a 5% swing in favor towards Reed Carruthers' side. And when you think about he, well, he's already a 90% favorite. You're talking about 95% favorite to win this game there. I, I'm not entirely sure what the... Uh, what the process was there for the Rhyme Weep team, regardless... They're in it now, so now there's really nothing else to necessarily play for other than the blank. He's going to attempt to make this double here across the rings. Control the weight so that you're never really rolling out over top of that other yellow stone. Even if you just roll sort of on top of it or roll into it, you're grouping the rocks. You'll have the chance for the double later. Does roll towards the rings, makes contact, spins off the top of that yellow stone, but I think that's a pretty good job done for Ty Delello there in this end. Going to be very difficult for Reed to keep these yellow stones separated where he doesn't leave a double, but once again, he's going to be pretty happy with a blank. So I think he's sort of playing with no necessarily, no pressure here necessarily. Calling for Jason Gunlickson to remove this redstone. I think he'd like to maybe hit it fairly close to nose. Maybe roll a little bit out towards the wing. Of course, if you read the two is still much better than the blank. So we'll likely continue to try and separate these rocks and have a good chance at the blank. Jason a this one really over curling, maybe just not quite throwing the weight they would have liked at it. Basically flashes, but maybe even worse, touches that red stone and moves it on top of the yellow, leaving it shot. It's a big miss from Jason Gunlickson. And now the opportunity for Ryan Weeb to put a stone, a second stone in there maybe and sit shot. They are looking at the guard. Which makes sense because there's really nowhere that you can draw to that likely won't leave some kind of a double. The only place as we look at the overhead may be to draw to the left side of the 8 foot to keep the angle uh, with that red yellow at the back of the rings. But that keeps things pretty open and um, still gives Reed a great opportunity for a steal. I think if you toss up this guard, your hope is that you try to fish Reed into trying to do something with those stones at the back, either freeze them or just move them a little bit. And then if you ever get a miss, you can hopefully set up a couple rocks in there for a steal, although this one is quite heavy by Ty Delello. Likely will slip. No, it actually ground in at the end, just stopped in time outside of the rings. 
We will see Reed make a play on that stone just short of the rings. If he can hit it just on the nose, can likely make the double and remove that other red rock from play. We'll probably lose your yellow at the back as well, but wants to move everything if he can to make sure that he there's no real good places for Ryan to go. Other option I th thought about, you could roll in. And then you're sitting probably second and third, but with a couple yellows around, Ryan likely can't ignore everything. So it looks like they have decided on the hit and roll. And I think this is a good call. The problem with trying to make that nose double, the run back double, you do just leave another guard up and Ryan Weed could make a draw even better around it. With this one, if he rolls in, as I said, it'd have to take some pretty good bravery for Ryan Weave to ignore both of those yellow stones sitting around. So he'd likely have to hit something. This one tracking a little bit straight, makes contact with the guard, but will roll through the rings leaving the Ryan Weeb sitting one. No real hesitation. He has the broom down. It looks like he's going to try and throw that guard one more time. First stone coming in this end by Ryan Weeb, attempting to guard the situation at the back of the eight foot. Now you might see Reed Carruthers attempt to make some kind of play in the rings if it's available. Of course, if you're going to get forced, you'd rather be forced to two. So if there's any opportunity to set something up, not necessarily they needs to make a play on those rocks at the back. If he sinks a good draw around somewhere, could utilize that for a second point. And I think that's what they're looking for. Or at least first indicated he looked at the draw to the top of the forefoot. I thought that might be the play here. You could play the out turn and come down to that situation at the back of the rings and try to unlock that freeze. But in all likelihood, you just see Ryan Weeb follow you down, freeze onto it, and get his force. I think if you go top four here, that's probably your best chance. Yes, you might leave a run back for Ryan, but with those stones at the back of the rings, it's certainly possible to get a jam. So it looks like they're going to try and draw to the top of the forefoot, the broom coming down just inside the middle of the eight. Jason Gunlinkson will be on the call for the line. As long as weight's close, I think you'll have enough to work with. Reed wants to try and throw this just to the top of the eight, but give his sweeper something to work with, and you should be able to get a little bit of extra curl out of it at the end if you can get Connor on it. So first stone here in the fifth end for Reed Carruthers, attempting to set up the possibility for a two. The draw to the top of the forefoot behind this red guard. As he release, releases it. Sweepers haven't put their brooms down yet. They might think it's a touch solid. Derek's staying really close. It's definitely getting quite a bit of curl. May have to go for line here. Now they're on it to make sure they try and get by this red guard. They will. And the sweepers will just watch it right down to bite the top of the forefoot. That's an excellent shot there by Reed Crothers. Great placement. 
Makes things very tricky for Ryan Weeb. He looks like he's going to attempt to draw around that stone read just through. One of the good things with this shot is you don't necessarily have to be dead buried. With that situation just in the back of the 8 foot, always the possibility of a jam if Reed decides to make a play on it. So even if you're just a piece buried full back of the 4 foot, Reed would need to be very careful with how he decides to throw his last stone. I believe if a rock ends up jammed directly onto that red stone back of the 8 foot, it's possible it could still end up scoring. Definitely trying to get some last minute curl here. Sean Flat with his brother Adam Flat coming with him. And they do get it at least edge on edge, maybe a little bit buried, but I think at the end of the day, just not quite enough. I think there's enough space there that if Reed can get fairly close to the nose or even just a touch high side, he can push that out of the forefoot to score his single two points, excuse me. And if he's able to do that with Take a stranglehold on this game, you would imagine. And will be the attempt here by Reed Crothers. Maybe play just a bit of a heavy draw, back 8, back 12 weight, to try and come down to that shot stone that Ryan Weeb just threw. Don't have to move it far. Really the only opportunity um, to jam it would be onto that red stone, but at that point you're hitting it so thin that you're likely rolling out and you're getting only one at most anyways. So final rock here in the fifth end by Reed Crothers. Attempting a delicate little tap for his two points. They have the sweepers on it early, maybe trying to hold the line. They seem to like it now. Now they've switched to get Connor on it, get some last finish. They're going back and forth. Means they're probably close. They'll watch it in at the end. He'll make contact with the redstone, push it out of the forefoot, score his two points. Reed Crothers will take a hold on this game. A four to one lead after five ends. We'll move forward to the six with a quick commercial break and I'll see you as they get started.
And welcome back to Leduc, Alberta, the Alberta Curling Series Major Men's Tournament. We are here for the semifinals, picking up action in the sixth end here. My name is Matthew Hall, bringing you everything from these two semifinal matchups. Quick update on the other sheet. Epping got his single point in the fifth end, so he holds a 3-1 lead over Yannick Schwaller in the what I believe is the seventh end of play for them. Or in the sixth, then, my apologies. Here in our game, there's really no other options. You're running out of time if you're Ryan Weeb. You're going to have to start forcing the issue and take some risks. And because of that, Reed just throwing two rocks into the rings. I don't think Ryan can afford to play a hit on them this early in the end. So he will toss up the second corner guard. We'll likely see Reed guard the situation in the center, maybe sink another one around. And then it'll be up to Ryan. He's going to have to take on some tricky shots, try and force some good angles for himself where he's able to at least come out of, the, out of this end with a deuce. Most paths to victory for Ryan have to include at least two points here. Get himself within one force read in the seventh. Maybe get a two and eight to tie it up. And then you talk about stealing the extra, but that's no gimme. Derek Samogalski will come down and make a pretty good guard. So now it's up to Ryan Weeb. Generally in this situation, you'll sometimes see teams play the run back and try and roll, make some kind of a double and roll towards a corner guard. It is possible that shot stone on the forefoot is accessible. You could hit that and roll towards the corners and try and utilize your corner guards early. Of course, that one on the button isn't necessarily the rock that you're most worried about. Probably the one top 12 is the one that's keeping you from accessing most of that forefoot. So I think he's going to try and play a little bit of a lightweight hit off, come around the guard, touch off that rock in the top of the 12 foot, move it out into the open, and then your shooter starts rolling towards those corner guards. If you ever throw it a little bit happy, heavy excuse me, and sail by, you would be able to get the shot stone as well and try to come out with the same outcome. Sweepers are staying very close now. Ty Delello on it to get a little bit of extra movement at the end. Makes contact with that yellow stone at the top of the 12 foot. Rolling towards the side of the sheet and that is an excellent shot there by Sean Flat. Rolling behind the corner guard. Those corner guards with plenty of separation too so it's there's no real easy double peel here for Reed. Likely we'll just make the single peel, continue to move on, and Ryan still has some work to do, but that's a great start uh, on the path to scoring multiple points this end. Makes the single peel, rolls out over the other side. There you go. That's your second point there over on the side of the sheet now if you're Ryan Weeb. So what can you do here? Could certainly play a hit on one of these yellow stones. I would personally think it's maybe a little bit early. You don't necessarily have to remove them from play yet. You'll get some chances with that later in the end. So going to instead take the opportunity to play a nice freeze down onto the shot stone. And if you can make it good, then it's tricky for Reed to remove either red stone there is the run back on the right side as we looked at the overhead there could make that double but then you're still leaving this red stone in the middle of the sheet which is usable for ryan weeb 
you can get this to a good spot, you're looking very good at your chances of two. Of course, anything more than two will require some sort of help from the Reed Crothers team. Some misses. This one not, once again, just not quite getting the curl they were looking for. Ends up in a okay spot, but I think there is space where you can get to the nose or even slightly to the inside of that red stone and remove it out through that hole. If you're Ryan Weeb, you would have liked Sean Flat to get a little bit curl, maybe come a little bit deeper in the rings there for you. Just leaving this opportunity. Now, this is a bit of a tricky shot. It does look like it's about half buried behind uh, that guard. Jason Gunlickson going to try to utilize a nice lightweight hit. As long as he gets by the center guard, he should be pretty close. And they do a great sweep there by Connor Negevin. Holds that stone, gets it by the guard. Don't remove that red stone from play, but roll to a fairly good spot, I think. It's difficult to tell. I think they actually might have rolled into the open. So is there the opportunity here for Ryan Weeb to start making some doubles? And try to bring that both of those redstones into play. It certainly looks like he might have some kind of a play here. I'm surprised with the with Jason's shot there. If if they had that much room to get by the guard, I'm a bit surprised they didn't throw a little bit more weight to ensure that they got rid of that red stone. It could have been that Jason was just a little bit light. We don't have access to the microphones on the ice up here in the booth, so we couldn't hear the discussion. But leaving that red around certainly gives Ryan a lot more leeway to work with than I think he would have liked to. So Ty Dallel, the attempt here now to make some kind of a double. Gets one, gets two. That second Yellowstone makes contact with that other red on the other side of the sheet. Thankfully, doesn't remove it from play. So there are three reds sitting around. I think would have liked to at least get rid of two of those yellow rocks. Maybe hit that first one a little bit thick. Wanted to get a little bit thinner and roll into the crotch between those other two yellow stones. Now you have to think about exactly what you want to place here for Reed. And there's a number of reds sitting around that you don't really want to leave. The only, you could hit either of the reds that are on the sides. The one on the center line really isn't that accessible. Thought he might nose the one in the forefoot. Looks like there isn't any easy double 
for Ryan Weeb if you do that. Could also hit the one wide in the rings, and you have a lot of space to roll with, but you would certainly need to roll towards the eight foot. And they will. Jason Gunlickson now attempting to make the nose hit on this stone side of the eight foot. Don't want to roll too far and give Ryan some sort of a double somewhere. I think you'd like to just stay on the nose here. This one curling quite a bit, though. Connor Negevin working very hard to try and get anything. Will make contact with the stone, but not remove it from play. And that's the second end in a row where Jason's Rock did that, trying to make sort of a lightweight uh, hit, and he just... No real no real pressure. It was wide open, but just over curls and just takes it, isn't able to remove it from play. And now there's a lot of red sitting around. I think you'd most likely to, if you can, if you can get access to that stone in the forefoot, which I think there is, you'd like to at least remove that roll towards the other yellow stone it's difficult to tell it looks like the double may be accessible at the moment right now if you do that you're sitting four big opportunity here for ryan weeb if he can even just uh convert a three here it would turn this game around you would think likely would still be Advantage Carruthers, unless Ryan could crack a four here. Just as I check in on the other semifinal, Yannick Schwaller and Benoit Schwartz made their hit for a single point. So John Epping takes a three to two lead. Going into the seventh end of play over there with the hammer. They're on this now. Did this make a move on them? They make contact with one roll towards the other yellow stone. Weren't throwing enough weight to remove it from play, but such a great angle over on that other side that Red behind the center line isn't easily accessible. You can't really go after the red that Ty DeLello just threw. You can if you're weeb and remove that yellow stone to sit a bundle. Reed has to be very careful here. Danger brewing for the Carruthers team. I think we're going to see a fairly lengthy discussion here to see exactly what they want to try and do. There's Really no useful shots here. I, uh, you could try and draw around everything in the center, but if you ever don't make it perfect, you leave something for at least three for Ryan Weeb, you would think. As we see Reed squat down in the hack with that kind of broom. Imagine the call is to try and draw to the back of the forefoot around everything. If you make it really good, it does make things tricky for Ram Weeb. It's difficult to see how much of that red on the right side of the eight foot is accessible. If Ryan can see quite a bit of it, then you have to be careful about the placement of this stone. If you go back four, you could just leave in off double to sit four or five for Ryan. So first rock here for Reed Crothers in a very tricky spot. Trying to not let Ryan Weeb crawl his way back into this game.
This one with plenty of extra weight though. Ryan Weeb coming up with the sweep. How far can he bring this rock? It does dig in back of the 12 foot, but leaves Ryan Weeb sitting two. But is the opportunity here for something big brewing? Depending on how much of that red he can see in the eight foot, he's definitely going to be rolling towards the center line. If you hit it in the perfect spot, you're probably rolling back towards that yellow stone that Reed Crothers just threw. I don't think you necessarily want to take on the double here. Of course, if you make it, you end up sitting five. But probably just a nice controlled weight roll to the other side of the center line in front of that back yellow stone. You'd sit three with no real doubles available for Reed. Still having a lengthy discussion. I don't really think there's any dispute of what the call is. He can definitely see enough of that red that he's going to take and crack at the hit on this right side rolling towards the center line or that other yellow. I think most of the discussion will be exactly what kind of weight they want to throw and where they need to hit it to get the proper roll and where the broom needs to come down. Looks like they've decided, figured it out here. So Ty Delella will... Put up the broom for Ryan Weeb and a big opportunity. Ryan Weeb, opportunity brewing here, taking a chance at the outturn hit. They put Sean flat on it right away out of his hand. Working hard, need to get it by this corner guard. They will. Stuffs that red like a ham sandwich, but just rolls over top of that other yellow. Oh, big missed opportunity. Wanted to hold that straight for them. Uh, just another quarter inch from perfect. The chance there to sit five, but it's still a pretty good shot. They're still sitting two. Reed has to be very careful not to leave something here for Ryan Weeb to score a bundle. Taking a long look at this, of course, Red is sitting two, but trying to figure out where he could go. I think they might be looking at whether or not they can corner freeze that red stone on the right-hand side as we look at the overhead. I think they are going to look at corner freezing this red stone on the right-hand side. If they can make it, it's... I don't think they can be shot. Maybe if they make a perfect corner freeze, but what it'll likely do is it'll take away and outcount all the other red stones in the ring. So you'd never give up more than two. Of course, you do have to be very careful. If you ever roll off a little bit, you might leave a double for a bundle. Final stone here from Reed Crothers with plenty of red sitting around the rings. Needs to come up with a very good freeze here to not give Ryan the opportunity for something big. Sweepers seem to like the weight. Now they're on it. Line looks pretty close. Have Derek on it to get a little bit of finish. And it will end in a very good spot, I think. There's no real... Options there for Ryan Weeby could possibly take on some kind of run back, but that's very difficult. They're looking at the in off of that red on the side, but it looks pretty close to that guard being in the way.
to answer the question in the chat as per points, I believe, and I'm not an expert, but I believe what happens is when the McEwen and Crothers team split up last year, I believe how it works is the back end gets 30% of the points each. The front end each takes 20% of their points. So when they form these new teams, they are taking points from what they got last year. And that'll sort of put them in a great position to qualify for the slams coming up next month. Taking a long look at this yellow guard, is it accessible enough with the out turn to get by the guard and push it through and stick around in the eight foot for three points? It certainly looks quite close. Oh, I'm just getting confirmation. Excuse me, I was incorrect on the points. All players took one quarter of their points from last season. That's how they determine the ranking uh, of how they set up for this year. And there are a couple other tricky little things with it. I know, um, I think there's some way if you only lose one player, you keep a large majority, if not all of your points. But that's how they set up the world rankings for this season. Generally, it's the top 15 that get invites to the Grand Slams. But there's always the opportunity that someone declines an invitation and they move on to the next person in the list. So final shot here for Ryan Weeb. The opportunity for three to tie up this game going to take a very delicate shot. They have Sean Flat on it early here to hold it. Needs to get it by the corner guard. They won't. Makes contact, rolls towards the center of the sheet, contacts the other red and spins around. So it'll only be a single point after all that for Ryan Weed. Big opportunities there, but just isn't able to capitalize on either of his shots exactly the way they would have wanted to. Move on. After this end, it is a 4-2 to two lead with the hammer for Reed Crothers moving into the seventh end of play.
and welcome back to the seventh end of play here in the semifinal from Leduc, Alberta, the Curling Stadium, Alberta Curling Series Men's Major Tournament. From the Leduc Recreation Center, my name is Matthew Hall, bringing the action here on the semifinal. The other semi progressing well, moving pretty quickly. They're coming to the pretty close to the end of their seventh end of play. John Epping with a three to two lead with the hammer over Yannick Schwaller. You can check out that game as well on the Curling Zone YouTube channel. <clears throat> As we watch here, two center guards go up by Ryan Weeb, as expected. Reed Carruthers counters with two stones in the rings. Ryan Weeb now attempting to remove one of these stones and possibly they would have liked to roll behind the guard, but unfortunately this looks like it's trailing out quite a bit. Pushes that stone and I think that was just maybe, I, I don't really think you needed to remove those yellow stones. You had the opportunity there where you could just sort of rearrange them. You could hit that yellow in the same spot, but if you only move it like two or three feet... To the back of the forefoot then you start setting up a wall for yourself to work with but throwing just that little bit of extra weight removes it from play which is actually a good thing for reed that's just one fewer rock that he now has to contend with and he's just gonna waste no time and walk up and try and double peel off these center guards they're looking pretty close they'll just miss the second guard jam it into the one in the rings moves his shooter out of the way so i think if you're Ryan, you'll likely just see them continue to toss up some guards for a little while. It's like the call here, they were talking a little bit about drawing around. Personally, I think that's it's a little bit early in the end to do that. If you go around, Reed's just going to continue to peel that guard and give him plenty of chances. It looks like they might have switched up, though they are going to throw up the center guard. I think that is what you have to do in this situation. You have to delay going into the rings as long as you can. As soon as you go in, you're giving Reed the opportunity to Make some doubles and get himself out of it. Now that guard may be slipping a little bit deep. There is the opportunity for a double peel here. And if they make the double peel, it's pretty close to maybe getting all three red rocks moving. So Derek Samogalski going to take another crack at this. Derek does get one of the guards gone. <clears throat> does actually come up and make contact with that other red stone in the ring. So one less thing that Reed now will need to contend with moving forward. Still some options here for Ryan Weeb. I think if it was me, I'd be tossing up one more center guard at least. I think it's maybe just one more too early to come in and give a... Especially with Jason Gun Gunlickson coming up on the in the hack he has 
an extraordinary amount of hitting ability, but looks like they've decided it is time to make a play on the ring, so they will try and sink around. Would like to see this one maybe bite the top of the button buried. Definitely needs to get curling, though. They swept this early most of the way. Weight looks like it'll end up being okay, but just not quite getting buried. Being said, slips behind the T-line, so maybe just a bit of miscommunication or mismanagement there by the sweepers or the line caller. They were going early. I thought it was for weight because it looked like it was going to get by the guard by quite a bit, and it did. But ends up slipping a little bit deep, so now Reed's not too worried. He's just going to peel off this guard. Eventually, that rock behind the T-line, Reed can always just draw down to it. Delello with his second rock here in the seventh end. Likely no, no real options. I think you need to continue to guard this for a while. If you're thinking ahead, you might look to freeze something on the button with Ryan Weeb's final stone. The way it is right now, if you imagine there's no guards up, you could put a red rock on the pin. And if Reed ever tried to remove it, it would likely just jam into that other yellow stone. So for the time being, going to continue to guard. I'd imagine eventually Reed's just going to switch gears and make a play on something in the rings. Looks like he might have, I thought he might wait one more rock, but looks like the indication was there that he is thinking about it. Quick discussion between Jason and Reed on what they want to do this end. It looks like they are thinking about making at least one more play on the center guard, as I alluded to, that they might. Even, you might want, looks like they might be taking a crack at the long double, the straight back double here. Could certainly just peel off this guard and make a play in the rings on your next one. With still two rocks to come from Reed, there would be the opportunity to get out of it. This one tracking maybe a little bit full. Runs it back. Oh, that is excellent. Into the crotch between those two stones. Gets both of them moving. Yes, removes his own color as well, but you're pretty happy if you're Reed. You've moved the shooter off of the center line and now you're never really going to have anything blocking the draw to the forefoot for your single point, and that's all Reed really needs to uh, move on with this game. So Ryan Weeb, the opportunity now to draw behind this corner guard. Would like to keep it above the T line or else Reed's going to follow you down and freeze to it. So you'd likely want to see this be about top four. Find the guard. Reed will likely take on the run back if you get this in a really good spot, but you just have to hope he misses. Then you can put a second rock in the rings. Really, there's no easy way back into this game without some help from the opponents. So sweepers seem to like the weight, they're staying very close. Might need to get this to finish a little bit. Now they put Adam flat on it, trying to get as much curl as they can to get it around that guard. Looks like it is going to slip a little bit deep. I think they kind of had to do that. You needed to make sure that at least got buried. But with it slipping deep, I think we'll see Reed try and come down and make a freeze. He doesn't even need to necessarily make a freeze. He could throw just above the T-line around the guard as well. That would likely do the job. Looks like that's going to be the call. He calls for it just above the T-line. I think this is a little bit better. Of course, you come down to that red stone and make the corner freeze. Ryan Weeb's likely just going to follow you down, freeze to himself, and then you're still getting the force, which you're pretty happy scoring here if you read. But this gives you, I think, a better opportunity to have a shot at two and I think if you if you get two here definitely the chance that we'll see some handshakes possibly not but I think it'll we're getting pretty close to that line there
So first stone here by Reed Carruthers, hoping to set up a pretty good chance for two points here in the seventh end and put an end to this game here in the semifinal. Sweepers not staying too close though. This one might be a little bit heavy going back to that back red. It'll slip behind the T-line. Derek on it to get a little bit of curl, make sure it gets right up to that red stone. Very good freeze, but as I said, gives uh, Ryan the opportunity now to just follow him down, play a freeze, and then you have to hit four foot for your single point if you're Reed. And Ryan does just that, follows him down, makes a very nice freeze, but wide open opportunity here for Reed to score his single point. We'll need to get a piece of the forefoot. Going to take the same path. He'll likely have a little bit of backing, but he just threw it, so he should have a very good idea of what the weight is down this spot. Jason Gunlickson holding the broom in the house. I don't think we will see handshakes here with a three-point deficit, but definitely gives Reed a great lead going into this last end. So final stone here in the seventh, coming from Reed Carruthers. The outturn draw needs a piece of the forefoot to score his single point, keep control of this game. Was a little heavy on the last one, so probably brought the weight back a little bit. Sweepers on it most of the way early, but they seem to like it now. As long as it gets a little bit of curl, you should have the backing as well. Come up, he will make contact with that stone back of the eight foot, but pretty good weight there by Reed Crothers. Gets a piece of the four foot, scores his single point. He will take a five to two lead after seven ends of play. And just taking a quick look here as Ryan Weeb has a quick discussion. I think I'd be surprised to see some handshakes. And they will continue on. So we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be back for the start of the eighth end. And welcome back to LaDuke, Alberta. My name is Matthew Hall, bringing you 
action from the final end of play here in the semifinal. Reed Carruthers facing off against Ryan Weeb. Winner will move on to the final as we check in on the other semifinal. John Epping was able to score his single point in the seventh end of play. So Epping with a 4-2 lead over Yannick Schwaller. Yannick having hammer in the in their eighth end of play. Two winners will face off at uh, excuse me, 1.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 Eastern this afternoon. And it's going to take a lot of help here from uh, it's going to take a lot of help here from Reed Carruthers for Ryan Weep to get back into this game. Yes, he had the opportunity in the sixth end to score multiple points, but I think Reed maybe took on a little bit of risk that end. It's likely something you won't see him do here. Trying to attempt the tick on this corner guard, but will just miss it and sail by. We'll see Ryan throw up the second corner guard. I think that first... First stone from Reed might have been a bit of a miscue with a three-point lead. Would have expected him to go into the ring. So now, discussion of what they want to do after that second corner guard was made. And yeah, it looks like he's just going to peel out his own center guard. If you play the send out, you peel the center. Ryan draws around the corner. You peel. Ryan could draw around the corner again. And you peel. And then he, Ryan does have two in the rings and throwing. So that could be his third point. But... The idea is with just the corner guards on one side of the sheet, he's going to be grouping his stones. So even if he sort of makes two great draws, he'll likely have the opportunity for some kind of a double there for Reed Carruthers later. No real option here if you're Ryan Weeb, though. You need to sink around. Give yourself a little bit of space so you can go around again after this. After Reed peels, you could probably just throw up a guard again for a little while. You definitely would need to go in again for your second point at some point later this end. But for right now, Sean Flatt needs to put this in a good spot. Even if you slip behind the T-line a little bit, that's fine. It gives you room to fit a second stone around there later. Trying to get a little bit of a finish now. Adam Flat on the inside. Does get a little bit of extra curl there. Do think it's at least half buried, but definitely accessible for Reed Crothers later. So he's going to walk up and just try to peel off this high corner guard does that loses the shooter and if you're Derek Samogalski your job is done for this end and we'll see Jason Gunlickson throwing next and with his up weight ability I would not be surprised to see Reed take on some kind of a double peel if it's available Sean Flott, once again, with his second stone in this final end of play. They will throw up a nice high corner guard. Covers up whatever is open of that other stone, although it does allow a slight angle. So I think you might see Jason attempt. And there was no indication. It might just be the single peel here, which I think would be smart with that redstone at the back being accessible to Reed. He's not necessarily worried about it. He can always pick it out later instead of peeling the tight guard. So just going to ask Jason to make the single peel here, open things up, and make sure he has Reed has a shot at the end.
Now a bit of a discussion by Ryan Weeb. When do you want to make that move into the rings? Uh, you could probably get away with waiting one more. I think you almost certainly would come in on Tidal second rock of the end. I think you could probably get away with tossing up one more guard. Reed will peel it. Then you might be able to make a move around that corner guard, try and get a second rock into a good spot. Of course, Ty Delalo as the lefty would have a slightly better angle at trying to get around that corner guard. As we Reed's now taking a look at what can he do here. It's difficult to tell. We can't see that high corner guard on the overhead, but looks like it's covered that stone in the rings. Would have thought he'd just walk up and peel the high one. He might be looking at if there's some sort of chance at a double somewhere. I think if that back one is accessible around that tighter guard, definitely just want to peel. make sure you peel the high one here. We'll still have access to that back one later, and it looks like that's the call. They might be taking a chance at the double peel. Of course, if you ever make that, it's pretty much game over. He just dead stuffs it, roll to his, rolls to a center guard. Definitely leaving some guards in play here for Ryan Weeb to work with. Bit of a missed opportunity. Would have liked to make sure you at least roll a shooter there for Jason. Probably draw around either guard here. But of course, as I said before, if you go around the corner, you're grouping your stones. And you'll likely see Reed attempt some kind of a double or a triple if you do that. So... Try to get this around this guard and don't give a lot of room for Reed to come around and, and be able to remove it. So you want to end up in the top of the 12 foot here. Thinking back to how this game has played out, of course the turning point has to be that first end. Giving up that steal of two to Reed Crothers really set the tone for this game, but uh, those blanks in two and four really didn't really seem to be much of a resistance by the Ryan Weed team. They seemed fairly happy with or okay with giving up the blanks in those ends, and those kind of set them behind, really limited the amount of time they had to come back. It'll be a possible chance. They definitely had their opportunities in the six to score a number of points. Weren't able to make it work out, but the opportunity here to get some rocks in good spots. Draw just coming up a little bit light, not getting to the ring, so missed opportunity there for Ryan Weeb. And if you're counting stones, he needs three to win here. He only has two rocks left, so with those guards, they aren't really splittable, so the most he could ever sit in the rings is three. So if Reed is able to remove this red rock, you'll likely see some handshakes. Reed Crothers' first stone in this end. A chance to book his spot to the final. 
have Connor on it. As long as they're by this guard, they should be okay. And they will be. They'll make contact. Remove the stone from the rings. And then after a brief look at these guards, I, they might they might be splittable, but looks like there's some decent separation there. I think that's a tough ask. And even if you make it, Reed would just have an open hit to win. That's the problem is if you, you could, if you think the split is there, you probably don't want to play it right now because, as I said, something will be wide open, either the shooter or the rock you're raising in. Of course, if you just draw around, you're leaving that yellow stone at the back of the 12 foot, so you'd have to out-split that with your second one. Only option I was thinking here was maybe if you can make a hit and roll off that back one, you hope Reed misses completely and then if you think the split is there you have a chance but sort of just grasping at straws here a little bit I think if you're Ryan Weeb trying to figure out some way to get two rocks into the rings here it looks like they are going to play this draw but as I said, you're leaving that yellow stone at the back. And if you think the split is possible, and I'm not so certain that it is, it's going to be, it's going to certainly be impossible if you leave that yellow stone at the back. They will attempt to make this draw into the rings. Sweepers working on it most of the way. They will get it into the house. Looks like just deep enough to outcount that yellow stone. So it is red sitting one. Again, Reed's looking at it, but with that yellow stone at the back of the rings, I don't. If the split it, the split might be makeable to get two rocks biting. It's difficult to tell, but it's much more difficult to get two rocks closer than that back yellow. So it looks like Reed's just going to draw one into the rings here if he can get it. Pretty much anywhere in the eight foot, I think that'll shut this game down. Checking in quickly on the semi other semi final, Yannick Schwaller. Down two points in the eighth end, is sitting two and throwing. But definitely a bit of excitement brewing over there as we come to the conclusion of these semifinals here. The winners will meet up in the final at 1.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 Eastern today. And here with his final stone in the eighth end, Reed Carruthers, just trying to put a draw into the rings, cut down the scoring area for Ryan Weeb to ensure that he does not have a shot to force an extra. Weeb wastes zero time, gets down to the hack, throws his last stone, but it's not enough. And we'll conclude it is a steal of one for Reed Carruthers. Final score will be six to two. As they shake hands, Reed Carruthers will win, move on to the final. He will play the winner of John Epping versus Yannick Schwaller in that final game. And looking back, this end... This game sort of slipped away early for Ryan Weeb, giving up that seal two in the first end, and they never really seemed to find their A game after that. Had one opportunity in the sixth, weren't able to convert. So Reed Carruthers takes the victory, and in their first event of the season, first event as this team, will be playing in the final.
My name is Matthew Hall. I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in this afternoon. Invite you to jump over to the other feed to check out the final few rocks of the other semifinal. But for now, thank you. I will be signing off. And the final will be going ahead at 1.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 Eastern. We invite everyone to come back and watch that. Thank you for bringing me into your homes or wherever you, you're watching for from, and good afternoon.